Hi everyone, welcome back to The Colour Cave where we like to play with art stuff. My name is Gem and today I am fulfilling one of the questions that I asked and that was if you would like to see me paint the cave in the cave. I'm really surprised that so many of you wanted to see this having done two similar videos already but why not? So today we are going to be painting the interior of the cave that is shown in this image here. And this was the thumbnail that we did in the last video. So for this today, I'm going to be using a combination of the Graffiti Tint Paint Pan set, but also the Graffiti Tint pencils, which are just out of shot over there because I don't have room in my desk. So I've got these here for reference once again. I did go back and sort of skip through this video because I couldn't remember some of the colours that I used. And in the last video when I was doing the thumbnail I talked about using the autumn brown along with the russet for the stone. When I actually went back and watched I realised and then remembered that the, there was a distinct difference between the russet paint pan and the russet pencil and that was how I got the difference in the, the stone, the stone colour here and here. So I'm glad I did that. So we're going to take that into account when we're doing this. So we're just going to get down to business. We'll start with the light sketch first. I am using Langton watercolour paper here and I've got it taped down just because I want this border similar to what I have on this second drawing here. In addition to that, I do have a pot of water with my paint puck in it. There's actually not very much water in that. It's only just covering the paint puck and no more. And I'm going to use that to wipe my water brushes rather than doing it on a piece of paper. Uh, just as an experiment more than anything else. So these are the Kuretake Zig Water brushes. I use them a lot. So I've got a very fine tip one, which is the yellow one, a medium tip one, which is a green one, and then a big fat tip one, which is this kind of blue purpley colour here. That's pretty much all we need. I do always like to have a scrap of paper beside me if I want to dilute out the colour before actually putting it on the piece as well. For the under sketch, I'm going to be using an F pencil. F stands for fine. This is the Faber-Castell 9000 one. It's just my preferred sketching pencil. When you're doing something like this, uh, a 2H is really good as well. So we'll get zoomed in a little bit. Oh, maybe that was too much. And we can just get started with the sketch. So this will be the this will be the easy part for me because I've already done this in the uh, in my sketchbook. So this shouldn't take me too long. I did take into account some of you made comments about the tree trunk and the fact that the trunk was actually coming down into the cave. So I've kind of bared that in mind and I will adjust the, the roots of the tree on this side of the picture very slightly because it was a, it was a very good point and for some reason that didn't enter my head. I think there was just too much brain farted going on when I was in that planning stage. On this side here, this is where our sort of greenery is going to go. We'll maybe make that slightly uneven, maybe not as rocky as this side, but we'll make that uneven too. And then we were going to have this path that was going to wind down through here and finish up in this area here. Okay, so just to get the party started, as I did last time, I actually don't need to lighten up my sketch because these lines are really, really light already. So I'm gonna start with a layer of russet over this, uh, basically the entire area. That's gonna be like my base color. I'm just giving this brush a wipe because I was using Julia's sparkly paints and I do believe there are still sparkles <laughs> present. Yeah, there are. <laughs> oh no. That's one of the things I love about these paints is that they, they dilute so well. So even if you do put huge splodges on your paper, you've got a lot of leeway to spread them out and, you know, really work with them. So I'm just really going section by section here to put in these colours. Now again, talking about the water, the slate green was what I actually used for the first layer of colour. And I do want to keep this really, really pale because we're going to have some sort of highlights. So again, I'll just kind of, um, I'll just sort of cover the area very roughly to begin with. And we can, we can work, you know, work around that as we go. Now, I did talk as well before about darkening this down, you know, so that we've got that nice sort of cave type atmosphere. But that just comes with building up colour, which again is something, oh no, that's green, we don't want that. Uh, which is something I've talked about in, in all of these videos. 
So we are going to have some greenery up here. So again, I'll just start with this meadow colour, which is it's probably more yellow than green, if you ask me. But oh, by being a little bit haphazard with my brush strokes here, um, all I'm really doing is just helping the, the sort of texture situation along. And obviously that will become, oh, we've dried out. That will become more and more of a thing the further into the picture we get. I don't know if you'll be able to hear that in the background. That is my fridge freezer and it is producing some more ice because I've just pulled, <laughs> pulled lots out of it. Okay, so we've got rocks in there. Well, obviously we've got rocks everywhere, but that's beside the point. Okay, yeah, tree roots. So now... What I think would be really cool is if one of our tree roots followed the line of the cave opening. Oh, yeah. So this rock formation in here is going to be hiding in amongst some of our tree roots. And we know this is going to be darker because it's hiding in the tree roots. So again, I don't have to be quite so delicate with the the use of the this sort of first layer you know it's not going to be too dark at any point so we've got these darker areas now so i'm going to grab the cool brown pencil because we decided that this was going to be you know there was going to be earth up here so i'm just going to put that in at the very top here the amazon delivery driver has been and brought me a new kettle that's which is another story for another day, but Pip and Jock have the packing paper out of it, so that was a rustling you can hear in the background. I have here the russet pencil, and that gave us this darker shade in the stone in this image on this part here. So I'm going to employ that for the, the cave walls, for want of a better phrase, because it is still going to tie in with our stone, but there's going to be that contrast. And that's kind of what I'm looking for. So I'm just going to sort of blend it in very slightly with this cocoa brown that I'd used. Uh, sorry, cool brown, not cocoa brown. Here. Because we are remembering there's going to be light coming in from the mouth of the cave. And again, we'll build up the darker areas that are meant to be dark as we go. This is more about just getting the, the general idea for the, the colour down. Now I'm pretty sure that I decided on having some sort of plant here as well the, the the sort of made up gem gem sprouty tree effort i do think though that i don't want that to, i don't want that to be so plain so i'll maybe just stick an extra bundle of rocks in here i'll just add them in as we go It'll be fine and then we can blend in this cool brown at the top I just uh, find it amazing. Now, normally Derwent are super, super good with their colour matching, you know, when it comes to the same colours and different products. So I don't really know what happened here with the the graphite tint paint set and the pencil because these two here are supposed to be the same colour and clearly they're not. So for the branches that are... The branches, oh my goodness. For the roots that are in behind I'm going to make them a lot darker than the ones at the forefront but there's gaps in between so I'm just going to take this cool brown and I'm going to put quite a thick layer of that down in there so now I have this gradient dilemma on this right hand side of the tree because I feel as if these roots aren't going to be as tightly packed together and I kind of want to indicate that there's going to be a little bit of light getting through there so in here, I'm going to go with russet just now, and again, I'll probably add in some shadows with the, the cool brown, maybe at a later stage. Now, over this side here, I think we want to be going in with the, the graphite grey as a first layer, and I'll mix it in with this, with this um, cool brown that I've got here. And I found with the grey before, a little bit goes a really long way, you know, compared to some of the other colours. So it makes it super good for stuff like this. And then back to our russet pencil here. Again, this particular part of the rock face, because this is like the drop down. 
this side is going to be dark but we can we can do more work on that one thing i haven't still entirely decided on is what i'm going to do with the light coming in like whether i'm actually going to make that a physical part of the the picture or whether i'm just going to hint at the fact that there might be some sunbeams or something and then we kind of decided that this path it was almost going to sort of stop up in here and then there was going to be perhaps a little patch of greenery so again grab the meadow and pop that in just see, bl sort of blend it in a little bit because the other thing I'm trying to think about as well is obviously if the sun is facing the direction of this this cave there is going to be movement so at some point during the day this whole section here will have sunlight so again just thinking about the greenery thing it would make sense that but it depends what angle it's at I'm probably overthinking that far too much but then who's to say that's the way the sun works in this world who knows right anyway I'm happy that we've got the basics in now so I'm just going to let this dry properly for a little while and then I'm going to come back and we're actually going to start putting in some of the details and getting some contrast in. Okay, so this is nice and dry now. I have had like a three day intermission. <laughs> it's going to be one of those weeks where I'm going to end up filming like an hour of this every day until I get there. Uh, I've, I've set everything back up pretty much the way I had it, hopefully. And this is all dried quite nicely and it's given me a really nice roadmap as to where I'm going with things and what I need to do. Right, uh, I am going to leave this uh, opening until the very, very end because I want to get my darker parts in first to see what we're dealing with. So I've decided that this side here is going to be super, super dark. We've got that layer of the pencil russet down there. So I'm going to kind of alternate between that and the graphite grey, which is what I've used down this side. And right from the get-go, I really want to think about placement of my colour. But yeah, I do I do want this side to be quite dark because not only is the is the light sort of going to be coming in at this sort of angle, like almost slightly towards us, but there's all these tree roots and where the tree is has like broken through down the soil. And I'm going to put a few tiny wee details in there just to kind of like depict that. So similarly on this side, I'm going to take this russet pencil, which has given us this slightly more reddish hue than the actual paint. And I'm going to start building this in over here as well. And this is just really about finding a balance of the different colours so that we get the same effect, you know, so that it fits in with the rest of the picture. And you can see, because right now this doesn't look as if it belongs to this cave. It's like a totally different colour. And I, one of the reasons I really like this as a medium is that when it comes to pencil, I do tend to go in really light layers and build up and build up and build up. And I'm probably over cautious with my lay down with my pencil, but I say the same about everything. You know, I would rather have it too light and have to go back in two or three times and build it up than go into too dark or with too much colour the first time and then trying to lift it. It's always easier to add than it is to take away. Okay, so while that top part's drying, I've just started down in this bottom corner and I'm using exactly the same colours as before, but I'm just building up a little bit more intensity and I'm starting to think about shading and where where the light's going to be. Um, so these sections here where the light's going to be hitting the top of this part and possibly this part here. So down here is going to be really, really dark. So I've got to build that up in layers, but you can see straight away, even just from that one layer that I've put, which was the meadow and the russet, both from the paint set, that's that's instantly brought a little bit more to this to this picture. So I'm thinking as well, with the water, the light's going to be hitting in this middle part, so around the edges is going to be quite dark. So I'm thinking about the parts here where the light isn't going to hit. And our water's disappearing in behind this stone here. Oh, it's looking like a proper little lagoon. <laughs> it looks very calm and peaceful, doesn't it? It's very serene in here. Very serene. I actually really like that slate green colour. And I'm going to get another layer of the graphite grey down. Um, I don't need to be quite as careful here. 
get that sloshed on. So I'm starting to think about the texture here and how we're going to work this in. So I'd like to just put a few lines and things in first and then what we'll do is we'll just start to blend these out. So then that gives us an indicator of where some of the crags and facets are that we're working with. Okay, this is quite dry down here now. So again, I'm just going to go back over exactly the same, not doing anything different down in this corner. But this is going to be quite dark down here. So we want to just build this up. And again, thinking maybe a little bit more about texture on this layer. And then jump into the meadow again. Jump into the meadow, not literally, obviously. <laughs> okay, we're going to get some more russet in here now. And I'm going to take it all the way into the grey this time. I'm going to be covering quite a large area here. Now you don't have to be too careful with your strokes here as long as you don't press too hard because you will be able to blend them out so it doesn't matter if you've got you know an even coverage or not as long as you've not mashed your pencil into the paper everything will be fine. And we can head down here. Get some more colour in here. So we are starting to build a little bit of definition here now. So you can see that the edge of that pillar is starting to pop out. Okay, so down here now in this corner I just want to add in a little bit of this graphite grey. I'm not going to go crazy with this. But I just want to start muting everything down a little bit here. Okay, so up here now, I'm back in with my russet pencil. And I'm just going to put a layer over everything. And I'm going to stop short of the mouth of the cave just very slightly. You see, I've got this band here where I haven't put any pencil down. And that's because I'm going to blend this into that. Because there will be a little bit of light reflecting off there just where it's coming in the... You know, because I imagine that to be on a sort of curve, it wouldn't be a, a, a sort of straight, like, 90 degree angle or anything like that, so. And you can see as well, there's so many different little itty bitty parts to this. I'm just working little sections at a time, and I find that really helpful, especially if I'm not entirely sure how the, the finished piece is going to turn out. Um, I find that really helpful just to not start to panic or get overwhelmed with it. Which is really easy to do, like really easy to do, but that's what we don't want. So I'll start in here, I'll start at my darkest point. And again, we can really start defining the edge of this big, I'm just going to call it a pillar. I'm sure cave pillars have proper names, I don't know what they are. Nice jaggy edge there. Do you like a good jaggy edge? And then we can start working our way through here. So this is actually a couple of weeks later. I keep having to leave this and come back to it. So I've kind of lost the thread in terms of where I left off the last time I filmed. And I think there's a little bit that I actually missed out. Uh, basically, I started working on these darker values there. Now I think I did film some of that. <laughs> oh, goodness me. But uh, yeah, so we're going to get back to business now. And we're going to try and get a little bit more done so you can see down at the front here if you just look at this section here you can see the layers built up and the fact that i've started to put a little bit more detail in so i want to work around some of these other sections and do the same thing obviously i'm still going to jump about because we've got um because we've got to wait for things to dry but i want to really darken this down i've got quite a nice gradient here and it's kind of what i'm going for um i just want to make it a little bit darker so I've been using this cool brown over here and I'm layering this up with the um, the graphite grey in the little pan set as well. I'll maybe zoom out a little bit just so you can see my periphery. I've also got a cup of tea today because I am feeling ropey as hell. Normally I don't drink tea in the afternoons but I've been fighting a sore head for about three days and today... I've taken some migraine tablets um, and it's taken the sore head away but I'm just left with this really horrible sicky feeling 
and it's just not going away. So I'm not uh, I'm not firing on all cylinders today, but that doesn't mean I can't do some arting. So I'm just going to grab some more of this graphite grey and build this up. So I have put the pencil down already. So that's going to help to blend that out as well. And again, the same as we've done over here, we'll use a little bit of the graphite grey just to darken down the, like, the very, very edge. All about the layers. So again, same thing over here. I don't want to take this too far up because I don't want it to be what I call grotty. I don't like it when it gets grotty, but... So the other place that's going to be really dark as well is this sort of, I want to call it a cliff face because this is coming straight down, you know, it's like a drop down from this ledge that's on the outside down to where this path is. So we want to build that up as well. So that's using the russet pencil, which has given us this colour and rather than the yellowish colour, even though they're technically supposed to be the same colour. I know it seems strange that I'm putting this texture in, but it's back to what I was saying before. You can kind of put texture and shading in together. And these lines are more for my benefit rather than the actual finished picture. So it's just keeping my keeping my eye right as to where I want things to be and where I want things to go. I'm actually really excited about finishing this just because I'm really keen to have like the the, the set of three. So again, I'll grab my russet pencil here. Try not to stick my hand and that might have to turn this slightly. Now this as well is really starting to bring out the contours of this pillar that's more in the foreground, which is cool too. Because that's kind of, I suppose, apart from the mouth of the cave, I suppose that's really one of the, the sort of main features. I'm trying to keep some texture here, so I'm not, not being too careful to smooth everything out, you know, absolutely within an inch of its life. And I'm just going to switch to this medium brush just to go around the pillar. Now I'm not, there's, I'm not using any sort of particular method or uh, technique for this, it's just really looking at it and deciding what's going to look right. We've got a lot of room for manoeuvre with these graphy tint pencils, they are very, very forgiving, so... And it's really easy to blend stuff out as well as go back in and add, you know, like more layers to things. So overall, it's a, it's a happy experience generally. So I was thinking about the way the light's going to hit the water here. And the prime spot for it to hit is this, uh, this rock here as well. So I'm kind of taking that into consideration. But I was wanting to try and maybe just lighten up a couple of these areas here and again I can really start to go in there now because I know roughly where this is you know where the light's going to be hitting I grab a little bit of this ocean blue and we can start working in some really you know much deeper areas as well So the same over here, this is going to be more or less in shadow, this top section here of the water. So that's an area where we can really go, you know, we can go a bit harder with that blue colour. Okay, I'm quite pleased with the subtlety of that now, so I think I'm going to leave that section alone. I do have this part up in the corner here, and this uh, this was one of the parts I kind of wanted to match up in terms of depth and colour. So again, just back in with my cool brown, but I don't have nearly as many layers on this side as I did all over here on this side. So I'm going to try and balance that up a little bit. Somebody asked me the question the other day, uh, I, the fact that I use pencils a lot... And I'm really quite fond of both the graphy tint and the ink tens pencils. People have asked me why I don't use watercolour pencils. And I think this has cropped up because it was one of the suggestions that's come up for the next Stash series videos. Um, and I actually don't have an answer for that. Do you know that? It's just something I don't use. If I'm using watercolour, I would rather just use watercolour rather than pencils. But yeah, everything else I prefer in pencil form. No logic, no rhyme, no reason. <laughs> Just down being awkward as usual. The other place I want to plonk some graphite grey in is down on this foremost, furthermost, foremost foreground rock. Goodness me. And start darkening that down the way we've done over here. 
So again, not not taking too much care about where I'm actually um putting down my putting down my brush. And this sort of spasmodic movement is uh, greatly, greatly assisted by my, my funny tweaky hand. So that's quite entertaining as well. Might as well make use of it. I feel like this should be a bit more rawr down here as well. <laughs> rawr. So again, at this stage, you don't really have to take a lot of care over this. I've got so many layers to go, so we'll get it looking fine and dandy. Just going to get this line down here sorted as well. Now, I am likely to lose a little bit of definition um, in some of these different sort of, uh, you know, layers of the rocks as they go further back. But I do have the ability and the luxury of going in with the pencils just as as pencils, you know, to get in those fine details. So I'm not too, as long as they're not obliterated completely, there's that word again, I keep using that word, um, then I am quite happy to carry on my merry way here. <laughs> again, I've just added a little bit more into the, the water here. I feel this is quite an abrupt stop though. Okay, so back to, back to the good old russet. I just want to start working on these areas. I keep hearing this random noise and it's like something's bumping. And it's the <laughs> it's the cave's birthday balloon, the helium balloon. I've tucked it in the corner and it's beside the radiator and the radiator is on. So it's the, obviously the heat's coming up off it and it's just making it bump off the, <laughs> the corner of the room. But do you know that way? Everything else is so quiet and I'm like, oh, what's that noise? <laughs> it's like, calm yourself, Gem. Clearly been playing too many scary video games just recently. I need to wait for that to dry before I go any further. But while I've got this medium sized brush and the russet here, I just want to start building up a little bit more colour here because we are still at the wishy-washy stage on this column. I keep going to call it a pillar. I suppose, it, oh, that's green. No, we don't want that, Gem. Um, I don't know what the correct cave terminology is. I should really be up on my cave terminology, seen as I own one. Um, but I don't know whether it would be called a pillar or a... I would think pillar would probably be... Oh, I don't know. I'm just deliberating out loud. Shh. But you can see how we can build this up without necessarily hurting what we've already done. Because technically, like this dark part here, see if I rub away at that with my water brush it will start to lift and it will start to uh, d d d d dissipate, dissolve. Either way, uh, we don't have to, if you go with a light hand, there is actually not much of a problem in that sense. Just going on a little graphite grey frenzy here. Oh, goodness me. I love how well this is blending out on this paper as well. You know, that I did pick this paper in particular for a reason, and this is the reason. It takes a lot of punishment before things start to go wrong in terms of the amount of abuse it will actually take from a water brush, which is fabulous. Like, that's really helpful for us right now. <laughs> okay, so let's grab the russet pencil again. That's not, oh my goodness, that was nearly a disaster. That's ocean blue. We don't, <laughs> that's for the water. Uh, where is it? This one. And again, because I can still see those lines that I had before, makes the job a lot easier. Okay, so we're going to start working on this path here. So again, <laughs> that's not very exciting because we're just going straight back with this graphite grey. Oh, but we have to think about where it's going to be dark and light. So in here where the where it's butted up against this sheer sort of cliff face this face sounds very dramatic it's going to be pretty dark in there and then as it comes down here this is where it's going to lighten up because this is where the light's hitting so we'll just keep that quite sort of casual there and then in behind here it's going to be pretty dark again because it's in behind the sort of hiding in behind this rock a wee bit so we'll do that there and then we can just graduate this out a little bit 
and then we can just kind of and blend in. <laughs> blend in with the grass there. Oh my god. And I just want to start. I was going to make this another rock, but I want to get the balance of the colours because there is a lot of this yellowy russet, russet going on there. And I think we need to have that little bit of definition, but also the help to show that this path is coming down the way. So if I plonk that in there instead of more of the yellowish russet, I think that's going to help with that immensely. I think just while we're on this uh, similar vein, we'll get back up here with a wee bit of our our uh, russet pencil as well. Mr. Jim's finally starting to realise that I have a lot of pencils. Um, he he has to we there's a section of our house where both our offices are and we call it the west wing because it does actually face west and it was a, a, an extension that was built onto the original old farmhouse anyway getting off subject so mr gem has to come through the cave this way to go to his office and he just happened to be walking through one day and uh, i had i was sorting out my pencils and he just kind of looked around and went how many pencils do you actually own and i was like there's uh a couple of sets. <laughs> okay, I'm thinking about plants. I was thinking more about like some sort of broad leaf, something, something doofer. So I want to bring this up here and I want these lines to be quite confident. I haven't sharpened my meadow pencil yet. Uh, I'll do that for the finest deta details because I do want some quite broad strokes here because what's going on in behind here, I don't want... The, these lines to disappear so I think I'll have two and we'll maybe have one at a jaunty angle like that just for fun but I just have this overwhelming urge to like have like massive broad like oh I don't even know like whoa maybe that can hang down into the water a little bit I figured out as well why why the the no the banging noise of the balloon. I figured out why it's bothering me because it sounds like the the tiny little noise my printer makes before it starts printing something out. That's why it's annoying me because I keep thinking that the printer's gonna go off. Yeah, I actually want this one at more of an angle, so that's a problem. Kind of made this difficult for myself, but it's not something that can't be. Fixed, and then there's another one up there. Okay, so the green grey is quite grey, uh, as one would imagine. So I think we'll leave that for our shadows, and I'll stick with the ivy just now, and uh, just down in this little part here, kind of like I've done with the water in this section. I'm going to do the same thing with the with the grass area, or the yeah, I think it's going to have to be grass, isn't it? I thought I was really tempted to start putting detail in there, but I'm I'm kind of getting ahead of myself with that. Because the other thing as well is if you're layering up lots of pencil like this, you're not always going to be able to accurately predict how it's going to look sitting on top of the colours that you've already got down. So it is worthwhile just um, doing a little bit and seeing what happens. I'm just making sure I've got the right pencil still. <laughs> okay, and I'm going to grab the ivy here. Now thinking again about light. This side's going to be dark. Ooh. Now, I do need to fix my boo-boo under, well, not my boo-boo, where I changed my mind underneath here, uh, but that's going to have to wait, I think. Let's blend this <laughs> Let's blend this out a little bit. <laughs> yeah, so I want a more defined line down here to show that this is kind of jutting inwards, so that will need to be worked on, but I'll just get this, uh, another layer of the red russet pencil on the go. I'm not happy about the saturation and the richness of this surrounding part. I'll back that up with some grey just shortly. That's better. So I've pressed quite hard there with that russet pencil, which is fine. That's not a problem. But we just have to make sure that it doesn't look as if that's what I've done. Another day, another sitting of the cave painting. Not this cave, this cave. Um, I want to work on basically just this little section here. Because um, this is what still needs quite a lot of work really sort of start making it look like that path is sort of not dug in but you know it's kind of like <laughs> down down the dip so i've indicated a kind of steep drop there uh you know at this part because this is obviously the wall coming down here um but that's kind of like f almost merging into the path there so it's flattening out on this downward slope and just a, a just a really rough 
<coughs> excuse me, just a really rough kind of like once over with the, the pencil. And in order to keep that nice, you know, the areas of texture that I have been building up, I'll take my larger brush here and just really sweep it across. So I'm blending out some of the pencil marks, but not all of them. So this in behind here, uh, you know, this is, again, just like thinking about where the light's falling. The light's hitting here and here, so it's kind of like hitting in a semicircle here. And this has got all these tree branches. Tree branches. There I go again. They're not freaking branches, Gem. They're roots. They're tree roots. So uh, it's covered over by that as well. So I really want to darken this down. This is going to be really, really rich. I have no idea what I was thinking when I was doing these tree roots. I'm obviously trying to make things difficult myself because why not? That's always more fun, isn't it? I seem to be really good at that as well. That just comes down. There we go. Right, that all makes much, much, much more sense now. I've decided, see this little spot in here? I think I'm going to make this green as well. I, I like to, uh, you know, I, I always have to end up with some sort of green greenness going on. I do love the freedom of this uh, in, you know, in sort of making changes at the last minute and kind of deciding what's what. Uh, I'm actually like really enjoying that aspect of it. I just want to, I've got a very sort of defined pencil line here and I just want to kind of get away from that a little bit. Now I'm feeling like I don't actually need to necessarily activate this with water now. I've got enough kind of guidelines there and I've got enough layers down that I can just work away with this pencil. I may put some more grey in it though so that might be happening. Okay so the other colour I was using, I'm just thinking about this path now because we've got work to do here. I would like to keep the grey because it gives a contrast but by the same token unless someone has gone and made this path it's not going to be you know it's, it is going to have some sort of colours of the of the surrounding stone in it otherwise it's you know as if someone's gone and dumped a bag of decorative gravel in there and I'm going to grab this medium brush again and I'm going to go to the meadow and that's our like our, our base green colour that we've been using. Do you know what I really love about this little paint set as well? If you wet the paper first and then you put the, you know, you dip it in the, the paint and then stick it down, it really does behave like watercolour. It has that very painterly aesthetic about it. In fact, I very much, I don't even quite enjoy it. I very much enjoy it. So for that back part there, I'm not going to put, uh, the way I've put the detail in with the grass strands here, I'm not going to do that just because it's further away. I have this fixation with contrast and light sources and I think that has come from the fact that primarily I only drew in graphite so those two things are super super important when you're not using colour because it's how you how you define all the shapes in your you know in your actual drawing so I think that's why even when it comes to coloured stuff now I'm still very like oh I've got to have the you know, I've got to have the contrast and the highlights and the da-da-da-da. So you can see the difference there straight away. Obviously, that's going to dry a little bit lighter. But that really gives definition to this pillar and the fact that... Or column or whatever we decided we're calling it. You know, that this this really is the dark side over here. I say, I don't, I don't need to go crazy with it, but... Because there will be a bit of bounce light as well, that's what you've got to remember. Although it's not a very reflective surface, there will be some sort of light. Let's grab the cool grey. It's got an almost kind of bluish tinge to it as well. Because I did talk about that, you know, kind of like incorporating some of the, the colours in. See, and I do think as well, this is like obviously the water line. So that might be a little bit damp there, although the water's very, very still. Okay, so in this next layer here, I'm starting to think about texture a bit more. Oh, that was way too much! So we're now going to have an example of how to spread out your colour when, when you've loaded up too much. And as you can see, it's actually not a problem at all. No, I don't, I don't know why I feel like I have to whisper when I do that, and I do it a lot, but... I think it's to try and kind of like soothe the panic, <laughs> soothe the panic in people. And you're like, yeah, it's not that bad. It's okay, really. You'll be fine. Everything will be okay. 
there we go, I had to reset the old eyeballs for a second there. I was just like staring at this and everything's just like russet. Really am, this is like so gradual and I think it's probably, for an A5 piece, this is probably the the longest I've, I've actually ever spent on on something like this. Which is, it's actually quite a nice feeling if I'm honest. I'm not happy with this part here as well. It's it's really, really light compared to the the other areas. And I've got this section in here to deal with as well, which is going to be pretty dark. I can't remember. I think that was the cool brown I used in there. I actually can't remember. And that's going to be a little bit lighter because that's the edge of the cave there. But there is this route that comes out and round. And we just want a bit here. See that, that section, uh, you know, I'm, I've kind of put it in as if it's turned slightly to more towards here. So the sun's hitting it or at least hitting part of it. Now the other the other thing that's kind of bugging me is this section here because this rock looks as if there's light bouncing directly onto it but I'm kind of enjoying the contrast so that's one like I'm kind of fighting with myself like do I leave it alone? Do I do something with it? And do you know what? I think I'm just going to leave it. Right so let's talk about these roots now. I want to use the autumn brown pencil. And I want to think about some of these individually because they're, I've got quite a sort of complex network going on here. You know, there's quite a lot going on. So even if I just take one route at a time and I'll maybe alternate. So I'll leave this one up here just now, but I've got the next one down. You see, this this one's quite interesting because I've made it come kind of like, ooh, blah, blah, blah. A little Jack Russell's just wandering about. She's quite, um, yeah, she's she's starting to get a little bit unsteady on her back legs sometimes, you know, like she has a little bit of a wobble, uh, which is to be expected. She's six, 16, uh, but she's just like, I don't know, she's just kind of wandering about, so she's kind of like waddling. It, it looks as if she's wandering aimlessly, so I don't know whether there's something going on in her wee brain or whether she's just getting, you know, maybe like the start of kind of like doggy dementia. But I just sometimes I find her, if she's not scavenging for food, she just seems to like wander about and she, she is literally just like traipsing about the house. I did ask the vet at one point though, uh, because I couldn't figure out whether the, this scavenging for food thing, she's always been a bit of um, she's always been a bit of a, a sort of what my husband calls her a gremlin. Like she's always wanted to scrounge for food and if you... If you approach the kitchen, she will be there just in case you're going to give her something or you're maybe going to drop something on the floor. She's always been like that. But it's it's like she does a circuit now and she she will repeat that circuit just in case. And we, we were trying to figure out whether she has forgotten that she's been fed, you know, that she's had her meal, or whether her body is maybe just not digesting things as efficiently as it used to and you know maybe she's trying to sort of um you know she's trying to pick up nutrients that her body's not absorbing because that that's what animals do if they're deficient in something they will eat things they wouldn't normally eat to try and gain those and it's usually trace minerals things like that listen to me with all my sciencey chat this is actually what i do for a living um and it's quite it's quite common, so we're wondering whether maybe it's um you know it may, it might be something to do with that as well. But the vet basically said, well, your guess is as good as mine, kind of thing. So, but she's not she's not losing weight, she's not gaining weight, so that's okay too. I love the difference between the pencil and the you know the water activated. Look at the difference between the color, and I, that's one of the reasons I really like these pencils because I can do a pencil drawing and just use them as pencils and keep that nice sort of graphite -y feel that I really, really enjoy. Or I can grab myself a little water brush here and make everything just pop out. It's it's absolutely delightful. I, I just love these pencils for this. Like, I really, really do. Now that we've got a little layer of that down, I want to use my cool brown. And I'm going to have to get as much of a pointy point as I can on here. I'm thinking about texture and colour, like, at the same time here. So where it comes out here at the top, that's going to be very, very dark. Now if I very gently, like lightest of touch, just go over this just with the pencil. And it's really just to mute down this very sort of bright reddish pink that's that's been going on. There we go. 
So that's kind of where I'm going with the tree root situation and uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll just uh, keep going and see how that goes. She says hopefully. But by using the cool brown, again I, I was talking about uh, not using black at one point. I prefer to use like a darker grey or a brown and it seems to give me the, the contrast that I'm craving without actually taking away from the the actual you know the color of whatever it is you're doing but you have to be very careful with that so we'll have this one here as well You see, there's not really going to be any light hitting this fork. This one up here, this is going to catch a bit of light here. So we'll leave that. I'm just turning this slightly so I don't keep putting my hand in that. But if I just keep my pressure a bit lighter on this side. So let's have a bash at this one in behind now. So I'm leaning a little bit heavier with the autumn brown pencil. Now this one over here, I'm going to go with a bit more of this cool brown just because we're much further over into the, the dark spot and like I almost want that to kind of disappear. Okay, so these ones here, the, I'm back to, although this disappears down in behind here, this is more of one of the in front roots and so is this one. Okay, we've got these two left and these two again, they're kind of like the in behind ones. So pressing quite hard with my pencil. Now you don't want to press too hard to the point where you're mashing the tooth of the paper down because it means you won't be able to go back over it. Um, you know, the paper's not going to be able to pick any, any more of your pencil up. So you do have to be careful with that. But again, that's just practice and also uh, familiarity with the paper as well. That's quite a big part of it. And I'm pretty well versed with this Langton paper, so I do like it. I've actually just bought myself another pad. I must have been uh, using it a lot more than I thought I, I was, because I had uh, there was a little pad that came in a scrawler box, um, and it had a couple of sheets in it, but I had another pad before that anyway, and I, I didn't realise I'd, <laughs> I'd used all of it. I was like, oh, okay, <laughs> good gem. I kind of swithered what to do in the background here, and I don't want to take away from the from the rest of the picture, I wanted to put in just a couple of little sunbeams, you know, to show the, the direction of the light. And then, with a with a very, very, very clean brush, I actually feel this is going to be easier if I turn it upside down. I don't know why, and at a slight angle, but it's so that I can make my strokes go in the direction that I'm looking for. I'm pulling that right down over everything that's going on there. Because the next thing we're going to do after that, using this big brush, is we're going to take some of this graphite grey. But in the original drawings, there was quite a lot of like grey skies and grey clouds going on. And that still needs to be the case. And uh, there, there are many, many days in Scotland. I don't know about where all the rest of you live. But there are many days in Scotland where the sun sort of pops out from behind a cloud periodically. But it's never actually sunny. And that's kind of the way I feel about about this. So we're going to get to work with our graphite grey and we are going to go very steadily especially like up in this top part. So we've still got that hint of that sort of slightly moody sky going on outside like we know that it's there but it's not necessarily impacting on what's going on down here because this is a this is a happy place. <laughs> well 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 
I am I'm feeling a slight sense of accomplishment here, which is really, really nice. The one thing that I do want to do is I'm gonna grab this is my old whisker posca. I've talked about this before. When a posca pen starts to run a little bit dry, they're great for flicky motions for putting whiskers on dogs and cats and things, and that's what I use this for. But I think it's actually past the point of being yeah, it's very leaky and uh, a bit unpredictable. I just want to scratch in a few you know, water lines here and there. And the other thing I want to do is, maybe this is, is quite damp in this little cave. So maybe these, uh, some of these leaves have got a little bit of a reflection on them. You know, the light's just catching them a wee bit. And then lastly, on our, um, on our sunbeams here too, if we just... So you can see why I'm using a really dry Posca for this. And there we go. I am... Um, finished goodness gracious me i am actually finished boom like so okay i know for some of you this is the best part i am a bit apprehensive about taking this washi tape off and i think it's going to peel some of the paper away with it because this has been stuck down for so long it's been weeks uh so we're gonna go very slowly yeah it's pulling it a little bit it's not bad actually There it is, everyone. The finished article. I am I am pleased with it. I am very pleased with it. But what I'm even more pleased about now, if I just zoom out, that's as far as we can zoom out. This is the edge of the table here, so these are my hands. What pleases me even more is that I can do this now. And I have the three completed images, all done with soluble graphite, from this original through to this one here and what I like about it is not only have we got a zoomed in view but what I've deliberately done is I've added in a bit more detail each time we go so you really feel as if you're getting zoomed in uh, I'm really pleased with how all of these have turned out and I want to thank you guys for encouraging me to continue on with this I would like to sell these as a set in the stash shop uh, the information I would like from you is do you think they would be better as a set of postcards or do you think they would be better as an A5 set like this so that people can frame them one thing I am going to do uh, when they go to print is I am going to digitally put in a white border on this one to match the other two so that they're very uniform and everything's wonderful. The joys of Photoshop. Anyway, this has been absolutely freaking epic. I have got a lot of editing to do in this, but I just wanted to say thank you very much for sticking with me through this entire project and also sticking through this video as well because I've got a feeling it's going to be quite long, uh, but I have thoroughly enjoyed myself. I would recommend the graphite tint paint pan to anyone, even and if you're not a painter like me, it still has its uses and it's, you know, you can still get some really, really nice results with it as well. Absolutely 100% worth it. So all that remains for me to say is thank you once again for watching. I hope you all have a good day. Please stay safe, look after each other and we'll see you back in the cave really soon for another video. Bye for now, everyone.